All right, I wanted to first do a little bit of review of what you've been talking about. Try to pull it all together into one idea and then, and then broaden that idea a little bit to, to other things, other kinds of energies that you'll talk about, that, that you'll be working on in the, in the next week. Uh, basically in the next week you're gonna, you're, you'll still be working with the same kind of energies but you'll be doing calculations. So we'll talk a little bit about the calculations. And, and just at the end, before, before Thursday, we'll, you'll uh, add in a couple of new kinds of energy, and so we'll talk about those today also. So far, most of what you've been talking about could be considered in a general character, the general term would be internal energies. This bowling ball there are a lot of energies associated with the different kinds of energy associated with this bowling ball that are all due to stuff that's inside it and not anything else around. So that's what internal energy means. And my example would just be, think of that bowling ball. It is a collection of protons and neutrons and electrons. It's a really specific collection. They're put together in really specific ways in that bowling ball. But that's what it's made of. There are interaction energies. So most of, much of what we're going to talk about in, that's new kind of in the next few weeks are interaction energies. Energies that we associate with two things that interact with each other. Things that interact with each other in this bowling ball. Well, the protons attract other protons when they're close enough. And neutrons. And the neutrons attract other neutrons. So those things stick together. They stick together really tightly and really close together in the nucleus. There's an interaction between those things, an attractive interaction between those things that holds the nucleus together. That particular interaction energy is is what you're talking about when you talk about nuclear energy. And, and we're not going to spend time this quarter talking about nuclear energy. It is just another kind of bond energy. Nuclei, the, the nucleons, the protons and the neutrons are bound to each other and so they have bond energies that can go up and down. When there's a nuclear reaction, bond energies go up or bond energies go down. And that's what nuclear reactions are about. They're about nuclear bonds and nuclear bond energy changes. Once you have a nucleus, there, there are other interactions that count, of course. The, the nucleus is positively charged and so it attracts, it interacts with the electrons. So there are what you could call atomic energies. Those are electron energy levels. The atomic energies even though we'll never talk about nuclear energies or almost never again, the atomic energies we will come back to and talk about a little bit in 7C sometime in the distant future when we talk about quantum mechanics because there's no good way to understand them without quantum mechanics. Um, but those are another kind of, in, uh, the atomic energies, the electron, uh, the energy associated with the interaction, attractive interaction between an electron and a nucleus. Those attract each other. Electrons are stuck to the nucleus. They're bonded to the nucleus. And so that's a kind of an atomic bond that you could, that you could talk about. Um, for the most part, we are not going to worry, in 7a, we're not going to worry about changes in the atomic energy levels. That is not an important thing in this world until the temperatures start getting higher than they are right now. Until you get temperatures of thousands of Kelvin, uh, electron energy changes, atomic energy changes, are, are unimportant. They don't happen until you get high temperatures. And we don't live at that world. We live in the world of 300 Kelvin and so we don't see those. What we do see is changes in chemical bond energy. So chemical bond energy is, is just another kind of bond. There are, so we started out with nuclear bonds between nucleons. 
the atomic bonds between the nucleus and the electrons and then a group of electrons bonded to a nucleus and another group of electrons bonded to a nucleus are atoms when atoms are very far apart they're basically not interacting but when you get them close enough together there's an attractive interaction between them the electrons can rearrange themselves a little bit again that's a quantum mechanics thing and and there's an attractive interaction and so that's a chemical bond and that is almost the only kind of internal energy that we are going to be talking about here because it's the only one that's that's really important at the temperatures we live at so chemical bond energy is, is what we're going to mean by this bond energy it is just another thing inside this bowling ball the nucleons are bound together in the nucleus, the electrons are attracted to the nucleus, all of those energies are part of what makes up this bowling ball and so does the uh, atoms bound to each other into long polymers that, that make up the plastic that eventually hardens when you cool it down enough and, and makes up that bowling ball. All of those are internal energies for the next couple of DLs that's mostly what you're still talking about is internal energies of things. But right at the end we're going to add in a different kind of energy. Not a bunch of energies inside an object but the energy of an object as a whole. And, and I've mentioned these words before I think. Um, this bowling ball with all its internal energies exactly the same can have another kind of energy. The whole bowling ball can be moving, so an energy of motion that we're going to call kinetic energy. It didn't have an energy of motion until I did work on it, until I transferred energy to it and now the thing is swinging around uh, kinetic energy depends on, we'll, we'll talk about it in a second, depends on the speed of an object. <coughs> so when this object is moving fast it has a high kinetic energy, when it's moving slowly it has a small kinetic energy. There's a point, there are actually two points. Over here there's a point in this swing when this ball is moving slowly. You can tell it's moving slowly because of how easy it was for me to do that. I mean I can't just, it's hard to stop a bowling ball. So the, re, the way I can uh, hold it there really easily is I grab a hold of it when it's already stopped. It stops up here and then it's moving faster and faster as it comes down. If I try to stop it here, it's a lot different than if I try to stop it at the top because at the bottom it's moving really fast. So the kinetic energy is actually large here. And, and small when it gets up high. So if, the, if that's an energy that's changing around, it's a, it's a pretty good bet that when, the, when that energy goes down, another energy is going to go up. That's our idea of conservation of energy. The total energy in the world is constant. If this ball slows down and stops right there, some other energy went up. So to decide what that would be, you would just think, okay, why did it stop? Okay, I didn't stop because I stopped it. It stops up here even without me stopping it, without me holding it. All I do is grab a hold of it when it is stopped and keep it stopped. But it does stop up there. So what interaction, what object? So I'm going to ask you for an object. What object is interacting with that bowling ball and causing it to come to a halt right here rather than just swinging up and slamming into the ceiling? The earth. The earth, the earth is pulling down on it. As this thing swings up higher and higher, the earth is pulling down on it the whole time. And so the kinetic energy goes down, but there's an interaction energy that goes up the interaction energy associated with the earth. I don't want to just let that swing or it will kind of slowly swing around like this and start to kill people. Uh, and I have been cautioned that that's a problem. Uh, no, I already knew it was a problem really. Nobody had to tell me. 
that interaction energy, all interaction energies, we are going to model as a potential energy. We're going to call them potential energies. The interaction between that ball and ball and the Earth will represent with the gravitational potential energy. Gravity is the name for the interaction, but the two objects interacting are the bowling ball and the Earth. <laughs> Every two objects, by the way, have gravitational interactions between them. There's a gravitational attraction from, of, of that ball by me. There's an, I'm pulling on that with a, a force at a distance because I have a mass and so does the bowling ball, or so does the tennis ball. But, but that's so weak that uh, we should ignore it. It's incredibly weak. The only interaction, only gravitational interaction we have to worry about in this world is the one between something, anything that we care about, and the Earth. The Earth is the biggest thing around and so that's the only thing that we have to worry about when we talk about gravitational interactions. We've got to worry about the interaction between the Earth and whatever we care about. Tennis ball, bowling ball, person, whatever's important. We'll talk about spring potential energy later. I'm just bringing it up because it's another kind of potential energy. Um, you probably already know this, but I want to say it once. Interaction energies depend on the locations of things. They depend on distances. If I have two oxygen atoms, so here's my model of two oxygen atoms, and they're very far apart, then they're not interacting. But if I start to bring them together, there will be an interaction that gets stronger and stronger. They start to pull on each other to attract each other because their electrons rearrange a little bit and starts to look more like a, a covalent bond kind of arrangement of electrons. And at some point, the interaction, the, the force of attraction is, is getting bigger and bigger. At some point, it's as big as it's going to get. Um, and if I get too close, then they'll start to repel each other. I can't shove two oxygen atoms right on top of each other. So, so the interaction energy, the interaction strength is going to depend on this distance. If I, if I let them get close enough and then I take a bunch of bond energy out, if I take energy out somehow and put it somewhere else, then I can have an O2 molecule bonded together which will then vibrate and run around and do all sorts of things in the room. So potential energies always depend on distances and lengths and things like that. And so that will be, distance will be the kind of thing we'll look for for potential energy changes. 